Hey guys, Ivan here, and let's talk about classic music Mr. Olympia. Let's see where we are right now at four weeks out, and uh, why don't we start with our current Mr. Olympia classic music champion, Brion Ainsley. It's gonna be hard to beat this guy. It's definitely gonna be hard. I mean, look at his back. Look at how detailed it is. The thing about Brion is he's super complete. He doesn't lack pretty much anything. He has a small waist, he has great presentation, he's a good poser, as I said, he's very complete, and also, when I say complete, he's also very conditioned. Very, very conditioned. And that's a really good combination. Apparently, it's good enough to win him Mr. Olympia, the most prestige bodybuilding title in Classic Physique division, of course. What exactly is the judging criteria for Classic Physique is a bit of a mystery. It's not exactly well-known and obvious, but I noticed that one thing that they're actually looking for is those details. A good V-tape or ability to hit vacuum is not exactly what Classic Physique is. It's what we expected. We expected it to be something that early years of bodybuilding, like 60s, 70s and 80s, were known for. But that's not exactly the criteria. The criteria is pretty much the same thing as bodybuilding. It's just a weight cap, longer trunks. And one thing that actually sets a Classic Physique apart from open bodybuilding is details. What exactly do I mean by details? So, for example, in open class, you can stuff your arms with Sinto, and you don't have to be as conditioned. You can just be huge, and you can beat the guys who are smaller than you and more defined. But that's not the case in classic. In classic physique, you need to have the details. So, if you destroy your arms, for example, with Sinto, and you lose that quality, the details in the muscle, the separations, you will not place as well. So, that's the thing. Because you cannot be as big as you want, then you have to have those finer little details that will make your physique impressive. That's what I found, that's what I heard some people saying, and I think that's true, and that's what uh, Brion has. But the second guy, the runner-up from the last two years, Chris Bumstead, is also known for the same thing, and that's why he's placing so well. These two photos of Brion were actually new, and this is new photo of Chris Bumstead. And in this physique update, you can see that uh, he is probably leaner than Brion. Brion is also very detailed, and he has four weeks to go. He will be on point, I have no doubt about that. But Chris is pretty much ready, already. And uh, he's not even flat. He's not flat at all. He seems very hard and very full as well. And uh, I'm not gonna analyze their physiques, what they uploaded recently. I'm not gonna tell you Chris is gonna win because he has better this, better that. I've said this many times before and I'm gonna say it again and people will probably again argue with me, but again, listen to me. Last year, if you watch the scoreboard card, you can see that Chris lost by only one point. That's after all the kidney complications and his prep wasn't perfect by any means. He was off. He was watery. He wasn't completely off. He was fine, but he wasn't at his best. He could have been a little bit sharper, especially through his lower back, lower abs, and uh, calves as well. His calves just seemed too watery because that's where your body holds a lot of water when you have kidney issues. The ankles and uh, the whole calves. So, the thing about Brian's physique that sets him apart is his arms and his back and the details in his pretty much entire physique. Now, compared to Chris, you can say that Brion has better arms and better back, but he doesn't have shoulders or clavicle bones as wide as Chris's. He does not have a great V taper like Chris does, just compare the lats to waist ratio and then to shoulders. And also, he doesn't have those full and big legs like, uh, like Chris does. So I prefer Chris's not only V-taper, but the X-taper as well. Now, Chris's arms are way, way inferior compared to Brian's, and the same thing goes with their backs. But, as I said before, only one single point. So it doesn't matter this muscle or that muscle. What matters is it was only one point, and this year everything is running smoothly for Chris. And I personally find Chris's physique to be more impressive than Brian's. Say what you want, but I think this is the most complete classic physique that we have today. All things taken into consideration. Classic physique has a weight limit, and now to be competitive, to be complete, is what is necessary. And uh, Brion is very complete, but he lacks that freak factor, that wow factor. Arnold is the definition of classic physique, and he had that freak factor. Chris also does. 
And if he comes peeled, and I think he will, I am telling you right now, Chris is your next Mr. Olympia Classic Physique Champion. All right, so let's go with the next guy. And I'm not saying that he's going to be third spot, but I really do like his physique. And about his front double bicep, why does it look so impressive? Well, I think I find it even more impressive than Chris's front double bicep because he has bigger arms. And sure, his bicep peaks are not the best. He doesn't have the most peaky biceps, but they are very long and very full. And his arms are just fine. And he has such a smooth physique. I mean, not smooth in terms of not being conditioned, but he just has a beautiful flow, perfect symmetry. Like, his abs are perfectly symmetrical. This is like two mirrors, literally. I mean, I don't really see this very often. So, he has a symmetry and that's what sets him apart. Arash has a couple of weaknesses that will probably push him out of top 3, top 4, probably even top 5. Now, I think last year he was 5th and this year I think he's gonna be like 6th place at best. And I'm not sure about that either because every year we have a couple of new guys, younger guys, who are not well known, who make progress and they place higher. And Arash is getting older, he's not a young guy, he's like 36 or something like that right now. But the thing that he lacks the most is his back and his quads. And that's pretty much genetic. At this point, at this age, he cannot really change much about it. And he never really comes perfectly sharp. He was very sharp at the Arnold 2018, but at the Mr. Olympia he wasn't that sharp. And at the Arnold he was very sharp, but he wasn't as complete as Brion, although he took very good second place. So if he comes perfectly peeled, like really, really peeled to the bone, he may even crack the top three, but not likely. I think the best case scenario for him will be repeat, again, fifth place, most likely out of top five, maybe even top six, but we'll see about that. Anyways, I love his physique, the way it's shaped, but objectively, based on judging criteria, there will be guys who are definitely better than him. For example, Henry Pierano. Of course, as the thumbnail said, this is all new physique updates, as well as Arash's. This is Henry's most recent physique update. And as you can see, this guy is a great bodybuilder. He competed at British Grand Prix and he took 6th place. Very, very good 6th place. I mean, a classic physique guy competing both in classic and open and placing that well in the open, it sends a message. It sends a message to the judges as well. So I think this guy will be probably 4th place this year just as well as he was last year. I don't think we will see too many changes, but it's possible. Anyways, you can see him right here, standing next to Samson Dauda. They battled for sixth, for actually fifth place, and Samson took fifth. He beat Henry, who took sixth place, and it was a great placing for a classic physique guy at such a big show, British Grand Prix, you know? And uh, Samson, he's just a little bit bigger than, uh, than Henry, um, pound for pound he packs a little bit more muscle on his frame. Now, Henry, if he added like 10 to 15 pounds, I think he would do great in the open. I don't know what the hell is he doing in Classic. I mean, the prize money is not that big, but he is making a name for himself. If there wasn't for Classic and him being fourth place last year, I would never hear about him, probably. I would not know about him right now. So I guess that's a smart move, but I think he should stick to the open now. Now that he's actually known, and that he looks this good, look at his back. He's very back dominant and he's tall, which is something I like. I like to see tall guys. And I think he should stay in the open. I don't think he should actually diet down this much and lose the muscle. He should just focus on the open because he has all the potential to be a great open class competitor. I mean, he already is. He's a good pro. He's not even an average pro. I'd say he's a good pro, but he's not an excellent pro. He's not a Mr. Olympia competitor. And I think in a couple of years of trying to grow, maybe even last, maybe like a year or two, he would do great. I mean, he would probably, you know, show up at the Mr. Olympia in a couple of years. And if I was him, this would be my last Classic Physique Mr. Olympia. He should just focus on the Open and do well in the Open. But as far as Classic, he can do probably top four, maybe even better than that. Now let's go back to the third spot. And I think it's gonna be George Peterson again. Now this guy, he is muscular as hell. He's the biggest guy on that stage, most likely, pound for pound, because look at his back. How much muscle is there? This is one of the most impressive backs of the day. Like in the bodybuilding, not only in the classic physique. But yeah, he's smaller than open bodybuilders. He cannot really compete in the open like this. He would have to add a lot more muscle. 
he could do well in 212, but he's a bit too tall for 212. So classic is where he should be and where he will be, but he is not classical. He doesn't have the classic physique. But he does have the muscle maturity, the muscle density, he's thick as hell, he's very, very conditioned. This is at four weeks out, and he has four weeks to get even more conditioned. So he will have, like, the most complete, the, the fullest, the most defined physique, most likely. The reason why he's not winning is that he is not the most classic. His waist is a little bit too wide from the front, from the back. You cannot really see it from the front, it's very visible. And uh, that's just not classic physique, and the judges don't want him to represent the classic physique, Mr. Olympia. I don't think Brion is that classic either, but he is classic enough. This guy is totally opposite of classic. But he is very, very thick, a lot of muscle on his frame, very conditioned. One of the best backs in the world right now, and that's why he places that well. And I think, again, he will be in top three. Now, all these predictions were very safe, because they're all based on last year's performance. But there is a bunch of guys who never really showed up at the Mr. Olympia. For example, Keon Pearson. We saw him this year at the Arnold, where he didn't look that great, not as good as he was at the New York Pro. At the New York Pro, he blown everybody away. He won the show, he qualified for the Mr. Olympia. And right now, he's prepping. As you can see, he got a little bit bigger. His chest is what he needs to work on, and that's why he will probably not win the Mr. Olympia. And also his conditioning. So take a look at this New York Pro version of him. I talked about the details before, and he does have them. But what he has, and what sets him apart from the others, is, is a very classic physique. Like, classic is an adverb. But it is. It is. He is very classic. You know what classic means. Now, look at his lower back and his quads, and his hamstrings and glutes. They could be more defined. They could be a little bit more shredded. So if he gets them peeled, to completely peeled, he can crack the top three or even win the Mr. Olympia. I think so, yeah. What can stop him is his shallow chest, but I don't think that's what can actually prevent him from winning if he is peeled. Because this guy has very big legs, very big back, great wheat taper, huge arms, Everything, everything. He just needs to come peeled. So if he comes peeled, he can surprise us. Not so much of a surprise, because he was looking amazing at the New York Pro, and uh, many people compare him to Brion, and they say he's even better than Brion. But again, details. If he gets conditioned like Brion, he can beat him. He can beat Chris as well. But that's a big, big prediction. It's a bold statement. But I think it's possible to see him in the top three, or even win the Mr. Olympia, if he comes peeled. What do you guys think? Tell me down below, how do you think Keon will do at the Mr. Olympia? We also have a bunch of other guys who are qualified for the Mr. Olympia and who can surprise us. But I don't want to make this video too long, I don't want to check them all out. Let's check a couple of them real fast. So for example, this Frenchie here, Stanimal, standing next to Sean Roden, his training partner, looking a little bit bigger than him. <laughs> Just kidding, of course, he's not bigger than him. Although Sean does have the angle, but no, of course, Sean is much bigger. I was just kidding about it the other day when I mentioned this. And um, yeah, Stan is great bodybuilder, but I don't think he can crack the top six. He'll probably be like, I don't know, maybe top 10, but he did make improvements. Maybe he will come and do better. And we have David Hoffman right here. This guy has a lot of fans, a lot of fans from Germany, where he is originally from. What I don't like about him is the shape of his legs. It doesn't look very aesthetic. His uh, waist is a little bit too wide. His arms are not just small. They are small, but uh, they are not very low inserted, especially triceps, but biceps as well. And forearms are a little bit too small, so I'm not a huge fan of this of his physique. I noticed many people are actually commenting, do a video about him, but guys, if I'm going to be completely honest, I don't really like his physique. And uh, he can do well because he's always super conditioned, but... He said in one interview that he is doing classic because he finds open division too hard for him and he's having a little bit easier time in the classic. So that's why he stays there. But I think he's meant for open and he should stay with open, not classic, because I don't think he's classic at all. He can be like top eight or something like that because of the conditioning, but I don't really like his physique very much. This guy I do like. I do like Danny Yunan, if that's how you pronounce his name. And uh, he is making very good improvements this year. And I think he will be, he was uh, sixth place last year, and this year he can also be sixth, he can beat the rush, 
He can beat uh, guys like Henry. He can beat maybe even uh, George Peterson because he's more classy than him. If he just comes peeled and if he makes really big improvements. So this guy out of these three guys that I mentioned after Keon has probably the biggest potential to place well. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I don't think we're going to have a different top two. I think it's going to be between Brion and Chris this year, just as well as last year. And I think Chris is the one that will win the Mr. Olympia this year. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, of course. If you didn't, don't like it, dislike it, do whatever the hell you want. But make sure to comment down below about whatever triggered you the most, whatever you have an opinion about. So, thank you very much, guys, for watching again. Please subscribe. All the best. Bye-bye.